Hi, welcome to Anime Adventures. I'm Elise Bowman, the voice of Pan from Dragon Ball GT. And this is a show where I bring you interviews with anime voice actors and other people in the anime world while I'm at conventions and recording studios. And that's where we are right now. We're at KameaCon, the country's only all Dragon Ball convention. Welcome back after year one, now here year two, from the Ocean Dub, Mr. Brian Drummond. They put food on the plate for us to eat, and this next person took the role and just owned it. You know, the prince of all sayings. The, he's he's got quite the resume, and you know, you might also know him as Kuwabara, All Might, Piccolo, Yamcha, the prince of Vegeta. Well, the prince of the Saiyans, Vegeta, of course. I screwed that up. Chris Evans. <laughs> he's so cute <laughs> you know uh, he's got just a phenomenal story arc it to me performance and things that I love to view are all about story and uh, Vegeta's story is amazing he goes through so many ups and downs and as that's what we go through in life so we can relate Maybe not the mass murder part can we relate to so much, but we can relate to so many other aspects of his life. Love, hate, you know, greed, and everything. Uh, and, uh, and, he, and, he's, and he's open to change, which we should all be as well. So, um, and look at those buns, come on. <laughs> I, think, I think what's great about Vegeta is that a lot of people, when they were growing up, they were like an indoctrinated to believe that Goku was the best character. And everyone as a kid, they're like, well, he's the main character. He's on the, he's on the posters. He's the best character. And I love the fact that all of you as adults have come to realize that Vegeta is actually the best character in Dragon Ball. Yeah, like, that's right. It's true. And uh, I've joked before with Sean about uh, how Vegeta may have been based on somebody that perhaps bullied Akira Toriyama in school. Uh, someone he respected, but at the same time, never wants him to actually be the winner. Um, but there's something about you just keep rooting for Vegeta, even though he like never ends up getting the ultimate win. Uh, he has won our like he's won our appreciation, though. He's become a better person. He's become a father. He's become a family man. And in, in Super, now he's a he's like a comic relief character sometimes. So, uh, yeah, I just I I think people really can appreciate 
kind of a dude who's just willing to kind of adapt to the situation, you know? Yeah, yeah it's true. <laughs> He's the most human character of all the Dragon Ball characters, I think, uh, because of what Brian said about uh, this uh, development of the character. The, the sacrifice in the Majin Buu saga yeah. uh, and uh, the family thing. Yeah. I, I, I agree. <laughs> Can I say something in Spanish for the yes. Latin? Please, uh, yes. For the Latin audience. <laughs> ¿Cómo están, insectos? <laughs> Do you know, my first experience in hearing any of the other voices on the show actually was the Spanish dub, because at that time, we were unable to get the Japanese version of it. Funimation was not, the, I guess it got lost on a boat somewhere, and they're like, we need to start dubbing the show, so we had the Spanish version. And we weren't able to reference it all the time because we didn't have the technology back then to actually play both versions of it at the same time. I have no idea why, but for whatever reason, we couldn't hear it, but whenever we were converting the episodes, I would have to listen to them as they were going through, and I always heard your voices on it. So oh, okay. <laughs> I heard your voice before I, did, I heard... I didn't know that. <laughs> I did. I heard your voice many times before I heard Ryo Horikawa's voice. So. Really? Yeah. 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 And, and I which, one, which one do you prefer? Uh, <laughs> oh. Since he's not here, I, I was... <laughs> oh, it's hard to play favorites. I mean, we've got all of North America covered here. So yes, I think, of course. <laughs> I had to come up with a voice all on my own. I got to hear nothing, so these guys, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> so you didn't hear Horikawa at all? No, uh, well, this is back in VHS. This is yeah. to tape. They didn't play anything for us, so I had no clue what Rio sounded like at all. Nothing. We just saw the visuals, and I was just doing my own thing, whatever that was at the time. Yeah, the first time yeah. I ever heard Rio's voice was on the first video game recording we ever did. Yeah. Like, so that's, that was it for us. I, I got to know him later, and he's just an awesome dude. I wish he could be here oh, now. Yeah. Yeah. Like Such it's a cool guy. guy. I, I was very excited to meet him, but... Uh, Renee, yeah. did you hear Rio's voice when you first started? Like, when? Yes, we, we, we did the, the dubbing with the Japanese uh, version. So I, it was weird because, the, you know, uh, Japanese is a very different language from Spanish. So when a Japanese guy in uh, the series said, uh, uh, I don't know, whatever, the final flash or hello or whatever, they go like, yeah. <laughs> That's exactly. And you, you have to say just hello. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> it was very, very hard to sync the, 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 yeah. the, the voice with that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's, right. it's true. <laughs> May I ask, uh, when you were dubbing it, would you record over the other language voice? Like, uh, would they play the Japanese voice and you would dub on top of it with the Japanese voice? Or would you reference it first and then they would play it silently and you would do it? No, we, we reference uh, all the time uh, uh, with the language. Uh, in, the, in the headphones. Uh, wow. We, we heard the, the um, You were lucky the because I, like Brian, like when we, when we were you, working on that show, we never got the references. We, oh, we recorded okay. all of Dragon Ball Z to silence. We didn't even have the music and sound effects, so we were just wow. in a vacuum. Wow, it, that's, weird. that's hard. <laughs> it was hard. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, dubbing... Well, it was a strip is, mall in a bank, uh, wasn't it? Where you <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it was very small. Yeah. It's, <laughs> you know, dubbing is it, it's, uh, in, in, in grand part uh, a rhythm thing. Uh, I mean, we, we follow the rhythm of the actors, mostly in English. Uh, I uh, made a voice of, of a lot of actors, not only in animes, but in live action, uh, like Ben Affleck and Keanu Reeves and uh, Michael Keaton and so on. So uh, for us, to hear the rhythm of the actors is very important yeah. because we follow them, actually, uh, and we follow the, the, the pulses, no? And it's, it's basic for us. Yeah, the, pro the, the problem with following the Japanese voice, no, is because their voice doesn't match the necessarily blast. match the, the picture no, no, either. Never. <laughs> so that's the hardest part, because when you're dubbing over the Japanese, they always have one flap at the beginning that stops, and then the rest of the line. So that's why there was always like, hey, I'm going to say the rest of my line now, or whatever it is. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. So we all love Vegeta, right? That's why you are here. Woo! 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 
But Vegeta's made some pretty boneheaded decisions in the series. He let Cell become perfect. He got selfish and allowed Majin Buu to be unleashed, and so on and so forth. What do you think is the most boneheaded decision Vegeta's ever made in the franchise? <laughs> I think Every underestimating day. Goku. <laughs> Uh, letting Yamcha hang out at Bulma's place too often. Uh, <laughs> like, how long after Yamcha and Bulma dated, he still seemed to live at Capsule Core or something like that. <laughs> I swear, Bulma, I'm going to move out soon, I promise. <laughs> but now she kicked him out. Have you noticed in Super, like, have you noticed, I, I, don't, see, I don't know if you ever see, get to see Yamcha's scenes, but, like, he is by himself a lot in a really <laughs> apartment that has, like, <laughs> cracks in the walls and stuff like that. I mean, he has a penthouse because he has like multiple windows worth of house, but it's really sad. And he lives there with his cat and a pink bed and one table with, that has one potted plant on it. And that's all he has in this whole place. <laughs> Notice it next time true you bachelor. see Yamcha's plate. It's true. <clears throat> but the, the saddest character on Dragon Ball is Krillin, no? <laughs> and he dies yeah. every time, man. Yeah. <laughs> Poor, I think even Akira guy. Toriyama knew that Yamcha yeah. is the worst character. <laughs> you, you like, think so? <laughs> uh, uh, they say uh, Akira Toriyama hates Be Vegeta. You think so? I don't think so. No. no. He, 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 uh, in the past, he said he wasn't a huge fan, but recently, the way it's been written, the stuff he's gotten, I think he loves him now. Uh -huh. It's the Goku and Vegeta show. What happened to Gohan? <laughs> yeah. 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 It's true. He wore that green tracksuit and it was all over, you know? <laughs> Exactly. So, we know that the, uh, the Latin American fandom is rabid. Yeah. Right? I wanted y'all to share some crazy fan stories of your time. Without obviously giving away any real names, we don't want to incriminate anybody, but any crazy or funny fan stories throughout your years of voicing this character? Renee, Chris? Well, I'll, I'll jump in quickly because it's way, way back. My very first convention I was ever invited to, and it might have been uh, when the show had originally moved, so I didn't even know it was anything. I was invited to a tiny convention in the Boston area. Some kid stole some of his dad's money to put it on, I think. Managed to find a couple bucks to fly me out there, and I showed up at a hotel with maybe 200 people. It was very interesting. and. The, when I knew that it was something, I was pulled out of a dinner event, and someone said, you, you have to come outside. There's a girl here, she maybe was 18 or so, that has to leave um, because she's only allowed to be here for the day. And, and I'm at this con. Most people are just being cool about meeting me. And as I left, she was most excited uh, because of Dragon Ball Z. And I, I came out of this event because she had to go home, and she was literally shaking and vibrating when I came out towards her and started to cry. And I was like, what did I do? What, what happened? Is, was, am I that ugly? What? I, and she was like, hush, hush, and, it could, was, and had to get a handler come to help her. We thought she was going to pass out. And then she just talked about Dragon Ball Z and how much she loved the show. That, I still remember that moment and going back into the room going, man, this show is weird. It's got some crazy fans. And of course, that was when it was nothing. Now it's all you amazing people. So I'll never forget that moment of meeting that girl who was so excited. Oh, do you have one? Do you have a good one? Uh, I have a lot of them. <laughs> oh, I want to hear these Latin American stories. These are the ones I want. <laughs> OK, I'm, I'm going to try to say it in English. Uh, we were at the Panama airport. Uh, so we were about to leave you know, on a plane. We were on a, um, to take a plane to take us to Mexico. We we're on a, s a scale, how, how do you say it in English? A, private, a luxury uh, private jet. A luxury private jet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. No. <laughs> and we were, we were on the line uh, just to get the plane. And s some uh, police officer from the airport came to us and said, Oh, you're the voices of uh, the Dragon Ball. And we said, Yeah, we are. Come with me, please. <laughs> and, uh, and we say, like, uh, but, but the plane is about to leave. Come with me, please. And say, OK. So we went with, the, with her. It was a, a, a woman officer. So she took us to a labyrinth in, to the Panama airport. The doors were open and open and open. And the last one opens. And we saw a sign, a big sign, who says Interpol. 
you know, Interpol oh, is the... Uh, and I said to Mario, you bring something with you from... <laughs> from <laughs> from, from, from like Colombia? And <laughs> Goku. <laughs> And the officers were there, and, and they said, hey, take a picture with us. And, and we said, but the plane, the plane is about to leave. <laughs> and they say, that plane is not going to leave if we say it's not going to leave. <laughs> <laughs> we, okay. <laughs> that's so, terrifying. That's terrifying. And we, we asked them, how, how, how do you know we, we were there? Oh, we were looking at the, the security cameras of the airport. We saw you and, and said, well, uh, uh, that, that's the story. Wow. <laughs> I've always wondered, I, I've, I've sometimes wondered if, like, we, if there's a, some sort of weird apocalyptic event and we go into this like martial law type of thing in America and my skill set will be completely useless because all I, all I know how to do is talk really pretty. So I just... <laughs> Imagine myself having to find the protection of somebody who was once a Dragon Ball Z fan back when electricity was around. And, and it would seem luxurious, but he's like, hey, just come out here and do the Vegeta voice thing. Bro. Just say Final Flash. Final Flash! Okay, go back in your room, man. Go back in your room. We'll feed you tomorrow. But uh, the, the weirdest fan thing I, I had was I was, at a, I was coming out of a hotel room, or sorry, a hotel in Chicago, and I saw this guy who... I thought was like the, the valet or something like that. And he, I, he goes, did you need a car? I go, uh, yeah, yeah, well, actually we did. We were gonna, he said, where are you going? I'm like, uh, Gino's East or something. He goes, sir, uh, follow me. So he goes to, he points out in a black SUV. We get in the black SUV and then uh, he gets in the car and he starts driving. And I go, whoa, actually, are you the, are you an Uber driver? He goes, oh yeah, I used to be, man. I was like, <laughs> it's like, well, what are you now? What are, what are we doing? Where, uh, where are we going? He goes, you're going to Gino Z's, right? I'm like, uh, yeah, yeah. And then he goes, you guys want a beer? I'm like, wait, what is happening here? And then as I was like, no, no, that's okay. He's like, seriously, I'll get one. I look up on the screen, and there's like a, a Dragon Ball Z video, like one of the Dragon Ball Z Resurrection F or something, playing like from a weird angle, like as if it was recorded from the second seat in the theater or something like that. <laughs> I was like, are you a Dragon Ball Z fan? He's like, yeah, hold on one second. And he stops the car, and he goes, you've got to call my daughter. You've got to call her and talk with her. I was like, are you serious? Did you just kidnap us from our hotel? And uh, he's like, she really wants to get into voice acting and stuff like that. Can you give her some tips? I'm like, oh, my God. Can we please get to the restaurant? And he actually, I paid him. I did actually pay him was I was get, just to get out of the car and he ended up dropping us off at the wrong place I don't even think if he knew the restaurant I was talking about but that was by far the weirdest like the weirdest yeah kidnapping yep well <laughs> what are you doing tonight somebody <laughs> <said. laughs> what is your favorite Vegeta moment with Bulma oh that's oh. easy one. <laughs> we can't say that do we? We we can. We, well, I don't know. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the last American are we version has to some scenes that? <laughs> that were edited out. I don't know. Was it when they were making a trunks or something? Or um, well, I, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to. By, <laughs> I think ever. I think most people would agree with me that in Dragon Ball Super, probably the best part is when, uh, or, or it could have been in the movie. When now Bulma the, gets slapped by Beerus. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's a favorite, the favorite. What did he yell in Spanish? In Spanish, he yelled something like, Nadie toca a mi Bulma! <laughs> yep, and it was, That's my Bulma! You know. I didn't even record Dragon Ball Super, and I have that shirt. I have that shirt. No, the, that's my Bulma shirt. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Brian, can I hear you do it? I know you didn't do it in the show, but can you do it my... Well, of yeah. course, how would I say it? That's my Bulma! <laughs> there it is. <laughs> you know, Renee, something we did in the English... Uh, American dub of the show is that there's a, do you know in uh, Super when they get the copy Vegeta section, uh, instead of playing the copy, 
I actually called Brian, and Brian played copy Vegeta. So I don't, I'm sure you're all aware of that, but of course, like the the, the jelly, the jelly yeah, the copy. purple version yeah, of him, yeah. 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 Oh, okay, what guy? Someone called him Jello Vegeta or something today, or <laughs> <laughs> he's got every. Are, are you gonna do it right now? Are we gonna do it right uh, now? Uh, no, 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 no. I mean, I mean the vo the, the, the the part of the two of two of you doing the the copy what and the original. I, I don't. I don't even. Count. All I remember is like rooting, like Vegeta in that moment is having. Remember, he's having a very hard time deciding who he wants to win because he wants to root for himself, but at the same time he doesn't yes. want to die because he's <laughs> disappearing like Marty McFly or something like that. Um, and he has a pacifier. Yes. As well. Yeah. I just, I just remembered hearing his first words that came out of his mouth when he was recording with us remotely, and it just felt so. Good to hear uh, Drummond's voice again, man. Oh, thank I know you. we Too talked fun. about this last year, but it's so good to see you oh, once you, a man. year. Thank you. Thank you. It was a pleasure to uh, help a, a terrible filler episode be interesting. <laughs> I think. I think you made it better. Thank, thank you. you. So, yeah. in, in Dragon Ball Z, there's this kind of symbolism where when Vegeta shows up, He's got, you know, the Saiyan armor, and then as the series progressed, he wears less and less armor. Like in the Frieza saga, he had the white armor, and then he had like the, sh the no strap, or the strap without the shoulders. Then the blue arcs got all blue. And that's supposedly symbolic of the fact that he's shedding away his past and becoming a new man. And you know how Toriyama is. Wow. Really? <laughs> this is the guy who knows. Really? Yeah, he, he knows all this. <laughs> so. Where do we go with Vegeta from here? He's no longer, he doesn't hate Kakarot anymore. He's okay with fusing now after Broly. He has a daughter. Where do we go from here with the character? What do you think? Are you talking about what he's going to wear? Like how, how little will he wear? <laughs> just Is a he bikini, just going to be a Speedo? Like a Technicolor pickle dish? I don't know. Uh, it could be. You know, with the, with, with the fan ask, I don't know if, if it's the case with you, but sometimes the, the fans ask questions like, uh, do you remember in the chapter number 182 <laughs> at the 12th minute with uh, 25 seconds when you said <laughs> that? What do you mean? I mean, what do you feel? And I said, I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know what, what was the, the, the chapter. <laughs> yeah, people are, get very, very specific. Very specific. They go, what's your favorite quote? I go, Oh, you tell me yours because I don't want to. I don't want to ruin it sometimes. So, well, you, you don't have this word in in English, uh, insect. You you never say that in English, because okay. in 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 Spanish, insecto is the the uh, the quote of of Higuera. and and it wasn't on the script. I invented it. <laughs> Nice. I, I, because the, uh, the, the director, Gloria Rocha, yeah. uh, uh, she said to me, you have to say something to, to insult the, the, the villain, say, but something that the, really, and, and I said, stupid, no, 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 it, it, this is for kids. <laughs> she didn't know, that, uh, it's for kids, you know, no, uh, imbecile, no, 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 something. <laughs> and I said, what, what about uh, uh, insect, uh, no? I said, insecto in Spanish. Uh, okay, go. yes. And is that, that's the signature of, <laughs> of Vegeta in, in Spanish. That's awesome. This is showing some ignorance on the, like, of mine about kind of how your dub was handled, but was the goal when you were recording Dragon Ball Z you know, 20, 30, 23 years ago, was the goal for it to be uh, kind of for a younger audience where you... We didn't know at the time. Uh, I, we didn't know it's going to be uh, what it is now, <laughs> this phenomenon. I, I, we, we just do it like uh, no, any other job. Uh, we were making so many animes and so many other things, and we didn't know. I, I mean, uh, so... We we thought it was a, just a cartoon, huh? yeah. No, uh, we did it with uh, with very passion, and uh, uh, it was our job. But <laughs> we didn't know it's gonna be what it is now. Uh, this huge international thing. Yeah. We, we knew it was for little guys because clearly, when we started 25 years ago, everything we had to say it had to be very PC. They're drawing like. 
dirt over Gohan's little bare bum and stuff like that and covering up all the blood is brown and and we would wonder and it's like well it's for you know a YTV or Cartoon Network it's for kids after school under 10 kind of thing and I'm like okay so we had to come up with new ways to say things we couldn't say I mean and sometimes it was still left in the scripts and I would just miss it and it's like you know we're gonna blast you to hell. and then I'm like oh no Brian we can't we got another dimension we can't we can't say that we can't say Okay, you redo it. <laughs> you have that thing here. I, I mean, uh, uh, you ban words from the dubbing. We don't. They don't necessarily ban them, but no. in our in the earlier versions that we did, especially, and we still do some of these versions for like the Southeast Asia uh, dub of it, where we you can't. They they ha must have this group of the most PC people in the world that are all meet in this one room and decide what words are bad. Like you can't yeah. call anything an idiot, you can't call it dumb. Anything you wouldn't want your kid, like a six-year-old saying to another six-year-old, I guess. Yeah. Uh, we have to do at least a version of it. Not yeah. everybody sees that version, but. No, yeah, and that was most of what we had to do. I mean, back when you, like, when you guys first started, like the whole concept was this has gotta be successful for children. Because, for children, yeah, yeah. that's what it was for. This, this group was not who they were making this show for. Sorry, well, guys. I guess in a way they well, were, they just were, 20 years actually, ago. Yeah. You know. <laughs> they were children then. Yeah. You were kids back then, yeah. Back then. yeah. So yeah, that's the Y7 version. And correct me if I'm wrong, but when you record that, like, you have to double the lines. Like, you have to do a line like, I'm going to kill you. Then right after you say, I'm going to defeat you or whatever. Yeah. Right? Like, and you have a, a copy of it in case you have to send it out for the super clean, right? Yeah. Correct. Yeah, we usually say that like once more for the children, please. So. Yeah. Oh, I'm I'm super jealous to have not had an opportunity to be able to, you know. Do you guys get to swear? You swear at all or no? Oh, we've gotten to. Yeah. Yeah. We, we've so gotten to swear. Get to say kill and swear and just ri like because Vegeta is a visceral guy, but to have to sort of soften up the words, it's it's a, it was a difficult thing as an actor to go. I just want to. Oh no, you can't do that. You have to say you dummy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you dumb dumb. <laughs> that's how it was. Yeah, and it was with uh, Kakra, Kakra, You fool. We fool like that's. And I, I love insecto. I, I mean, yeah. Come on, <laughs> I gotta say, you know. <laughs> you know, in one occasion I was uh, dubbing uh, uh, Romeo and Juliet version. For Disney, uh, oh. or Disney was the producer, what well, uh, ABC or whatever, yeah. and it was Romeo and Juliet, and I was dubbing uh, Paul Giamatti uh, yeah. in Spanish. He, he was the the priest yeah. of Romeo and Juliet, yeah. and all the time he said, "Oh my God, uh, yes. uh, Jesus, Mary, Joseph, whatever." Yes. Huh? Yeah. And uh, for Disney, you cannot say uh, any religious oh, gosh. word. Uh, yeah, oh, gosh. but it was Shakespeare. And I, and I said to the to the people in the studio, you want me to change the words that Shakespeare wrote? <laughs> and they say yes. <laughs> and I was, what? <laughs> I praise the son of Gosh. <laughs> exactly. Question, um, but you, Ryan. Okay, so for those who don't know, there is an ocean dub of Kai, and yes. it's vanished off the face of the earth. <laughs> But, so when you did the Ocean Dub of Kai, it was still censored? Uh, no, and for, for my Ocean Dub of Kai, we did get to say things like that, yeah. That's yeah. the one I want to hear. Yeah, it's, uh, it's in a vault at Ocean somewhere. I don't know what's up with distribution or something like that. I have no clue. We, were, we did the whole thing. So, uh, question for yeah. you and Chris. When you guys came back to do Kai, now, because when you first came in, right, you didn't really know what Vegeta's fate was. Now that you know, that he eventually becomes a good guy, a family man. Yeah. When you came back to Dukai, knowing that, did it change the way you performed the character? Not really. What what changed was my my voice had probably changed a little bit. It's it was a little deeper, so I didn't pitch it quite as high, and um, <laughs> I probably didn't put because I was by the, when that came back, I was on a lot of other shows at that time. When I first started. Uh, uh, I was only doing a couple shows a week. I was doing, like I said, a G.I. Joe was my first series in 1994, and then in 95, where I was doing Dragon Ball Z. And so I didn't have a lot of stuff. So when I went in there and screamed, I just blew my guts out and was like, yeah, because I, I didn't have any other work that week. It didn't matter. I was on a lot of shows when, when it came back and they said they were doing Kai. So even when they called me, I was like, you got to book me on a Friday. 
because I need a weekend. To, like, I'm not doing any Dragon Ball on Monday through Thursday. I'm on other stuff. I'll only do Dragon Ball on a Friday. And I still didn't push my voice the way I did before. So I hope it won't be disappointing to hear that, I, that when they do hear it, it won't be the kind of visceral, insane, blood-curdling stuff that I did in the original 50, 60 episodes. I, I kind of noticed that even Ryo Horikawa was holding back a little bit in Kai as well. I don't know yeah. if you all noticed it, like, because his screams in Dragon Ball Z were intense, and his yeah. screams in Super are phenomenal. It's like he's almost gotten way better over the years, like as an actor, too. Uh, he's constantly perform like improving. But I did notice in Kai he was a little bit more reserved. Did you notice that his his voice was kind of like <laughs> a little bit more than normal? So yeah, yeah. Uh, and and the, you say the screams in in, um, in Dragon Ball. It's hard to do that <laughs> because they uh, they scream like uh, for a two or three minutes <laughs> sometimes. When you have a lot of other shows to do, it is you are yeah. thinking as you're doing it. I am going to get fired tomorrow from yep. this Ford commercial I have because I auditioned last week, sounded great. I just did a Dragon Ball episode, and my voice is completely different. Yeah. So you are thinking a whole different thing while you're working it's and hard. doing that kind of work. It's hard to do that. The, yeah. the, the screaming. By far, though, I think it's the most difficult show I've ever worked on and still continue to work uh, on. Yeah, yeah. Wow. So what we're going to do is, if you have a VIP badge, line up by the microphone over here. Uh, you must show your badge to ask a question to Vegeta, Vegeta, or Vegeta. So, <laughs> but they all or Vegeta. Vegeta so. He must. Line them up, line them up. <laughs> or all my. What? It doesn't work? It's a, turn it on. <laughs> turn it on! Test it. Huh? The battery's out. This is theater. I don't need a mic. Okay. <laughs> you might have to give him yours. Hey, it's a Dragon Ball panel. Let's scream him out. Uh, Press yeah, the mute button. Show you how it feels. I will say you guys are awesome. Very cool. Thank, Thank you. you. I don't know. You want to do it <laughs> you do you want you to do it together? All three. At this the way. same time? Yes, please. If, if okay. possible, please. Gallic whore. All right. Oh, gonna thank you so much. We're going to try it. One. You At might not get time. the move because we yeah, I'm going to have to kind of follow you guys. All right. Gallic this could have been the end, but we'll do it now. God. God. Yeah, that's one, one two, three. Gallic whore! Yeah. Woo! A triple Gallic gun, first time ever attempted. <laughs> Sorry for destroying the people in the front with this. Let us spit on these people down here. Sorry, insectos. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, good evening, you guys. Um, first of all, I just want to say thank y'all for coming out here, taking your time, and, you know, express yourself with us. And uh, I'm Joseph Buffington from Atlanta, Georgia. And just something simple. What was the most memorable moment that you can remember recording any part within Dragon Ball or any part that you ever recorded, period? When, when we get paid for any show. Cualquier <laughs> programa. <laughs> yeah, I, we keep looking at you. I, I, you know, most memorable part of any memorable moment. You know what? I, I, it's not, uh, uh, I will go outside of Dragon Ball Z just because um, there's, I've worked on a lot of other shows, but when I showed up to work on uh, Inspector Gadget with Maurice LaMarche, Pinky and the Brain, he plays the Brain, great, great actor, but we did a, a new revamp version a number of years ago, and I was cast as the new Dr. Claw. So the moment I was in a room, with Mo LaMarche, he was playing Inspector Gadget, and I got to do the voice of Dr. Claw, with, which I grew up watching yeah, as a kid. Yeah. That was like really surreal. I was like, what is happening to me? <laughs> so it was, uh, it was amazing. That was mine. Yeah. yeah. Maurice LaMarche, that's a, that's a guy I think that every single voice person gets nervous around. Yeah, like, he's, he's the nicest person ever, but he's just so talented. He's yeah. so freaking good. Amazing actor. That was for all three. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Next question. Well, do you want to answer? Uh, yes. Uh, yeah. When we get paid, it's 
beautiful moment. <laughs> yeah, when we get paid, I forgot that one. That is my favorite part of my. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got paid? Uh, <laughs> I feel like I got cheated. Um, <laughs> Man, when we first got to do some more, some new Dragon Ball material that wasn't Kai, that wasn't that wasn't Dragon Ball Z, the first time we actually got to do like a, a modern Dragon Ball Z movie, that was probably like like Battle of Gods. That was like a really special time because mm. we all got to kind of come out of the woodwork and do our thing again. It was awesome. That is cool. And I, and I think Broly is maybe the the I think is the best of the three. I of, agree. No. Yeah, I agree. Broly is the best movie I think so. of all of them. And do, you, and do you know why you that all, is? You all think Broly's that's the because, best one of the uh, new movies? Yeah. That's best, because Vegeta's fight looking, in the Broly sure. movie is the best fight in the Broly movie. In my, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. <laughs> and, and Vegeta actually wins. He, he does win. Yeah, he, does. he won that fight. Next. Um, hey, I'm Scott from Australia. And I was just wondering, what's your favorite moment recording Dragon Ball? What was your favorite moment in the booth, like recording. Booth. <laughs> favorite moment in the booth. Ugh. Leaving is usually yeah, my yeah. favorite moment in the booth. <laughs> it's like, like a... ding, six o'clock. Oh, thank. <laughs> I, I, honestly, I, I will, and I've said anybody downstairs, these voice actors that said I loved doing the fighting and dra are liars. I, I could not wait for a fight session when I showed up. <laughs> the director, Carl Willems, who directs tons of stuff at Ocean, ton piles of great director. I'd look at him because I didn't see the scripts in advance. And I'd give him that sort of look when I rolled in. He said, it's okay, there's no fights today. I'm like, oh. <laughs> yeah. And I was just so happy if he'd say there was no fights. But when there were, he's like, yeah, there's one pretty big one. <laughs> Leaving was my happiest moment. <laughs> yeah, it was for all three of you, by the way. <laughs> we might not let get through we a lot to, if we do all three for yeah. everybody. Uh, you, you know, uh, uh, we are uh, very lucky to, to do what we do. And I don't have a favorite moment of anything at all. I mean, all the moments I mean uh, in whatever project it is, I, I feel lucky. I feel so fortunate to, to do what I do and living for what I do. <laughs> So I'm happy. I'm happy to to be an actor and uh, and be be able to do to do all these characters. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what else to say. <laughs> so, really. My favorite moments were actually normally not in the booth. My I was really lucky that I got to be on the other side of the the table a lot because I was directing Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. And the best thing about it was that I actually got to connect with all of the actors, like every single person that would come in. The director is the luckiest person because you get to know every single actor and you're connected to all of them. Like I'm sort of like the great grandfather of all actors in Dallas. And uh, but through that process, I got to watch people like Laura Bailey at 18 years old, just like absolutely killing it. Uh, Colleen Clinkenbeard is incredible, Travis Willingham, and all these, uh, and Eric Vale, who's here this weekend, those are people that came into, and, and this, for us in Dallas, it was a miraculous thing when we got an actor who actually was really good from the start. You know, a lot of times in Dallas, we had to train someone to kind of come in and do something, but when someone would come in and they were immediately super strong, like Kent Williams Chris or Ayers. Chris Ayers, for instance, yes. Uh, they, that was the, that's the best part. So I think really directing the show was actually far more rewarding than any of the screaming I had to do in it, that's for sure. Yeah. Oh, way yeah. easier. <clears throat> As a kid, I'd always try to do Kamehameha, turn Super Saiyan, Final Flash. When you guys are doing your lines, did you ever take the stance or do the motions <laughs> uh, for uh, Chris? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, I don't, I don't do the whole thing. I don't like crouch down or do anything like. But when you are, when your job is to watch something and mimic it, I think just by instinct, a lot of the times you kind of make hand gestures or movements. I don't know about you, but I'm, I move around. I don't do like when I'm fighting. I'm not like like pushing. Like, but I, I do. I am in some sort of pose usually when I'm doing it. I don't know. Uh, I, the, the thing is, you can't do it because of the mic uh, you have in front of you. If you move 
so much, uh, it's going to be useless because it, your voice has to be very, very clear. So if you uh, hit uh, the table or whatever, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be on the recording. So you, you can't do a lot of movement. Yeah, there's not a lot of... You're, you have to be about here, so if you come off the mic while you're fighting, then all of a sudden the sound is a little bit... Di that's what'll happen in recording. So you're, yeah. you're limited. You might do all kinds of this, but your head's got to stay yeah. right where it is. A lot of times it is a one-handed process. Yeah. So. <laughs> really? Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Go for it. Hi. Um, I have a question for Chris. I was just wondering how you feel if the Saiyans got their tails back. Yank on it. That the Saiyans got their tails back? Like, if they did. Like, I don't know. Well, oh, I, like, well, how you feel I think she about means that Vegeta. The thing I would be the most yeah. happy about is that, like, maybe, like, Super Saiyan 4 Vegeta would finally be canon. <laughs> um, because, I don't know about you, but, like, I love that form of Vegeta so much. Yeah. Like, it's just such a cool-looking form where he has, like, kind of the hairy arms and the tail and all that stuff. Like, yeah. I'd be all about it. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. You go ahead and I'll ask one. Oh, okay. Um, this is for Chris. Um, what was the most taxing session you've ever recorded in the booth? Uh, wow. Uh, ta I mean, all of them are so taxing. Um, it's, it was probably all the Dragon Ball, the original Dragon Ball Z sessions were the worst because Kai fixed a lot of the stuff that was the absolute worst because when we yeah. when I found out we we're going to record Kai again I like you was I, we were really like, busy no. working on a lot of shows and I was like if we're going to have to scream like we did on the first one this is going to be a lot of this is going to be a lot of trouble but Kai did a really good job of like screaming and then cutting away and then cutting back and then it was over yeah. but in the original version it'd be like ha and they cut away and you're like you stop and then it comes back and you're supposed to still be screaming and you have yeah. to do it again uh, so yeah the long 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 power-ups, long screams into really big stuff, that's always the hardest. I, All right. Thanks. Love sure. you guys. Thanks. Quick question for, for Chris and Renee. So which do you like more, blue or four? <laughs> Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> or God. Because in the movie, when I went, every time I went to see the movie, when Vegeta went God, everybody clapped. Yeah. That's like one of the biggest yeah. moments of the movie. With the fire aura, that was a good one too. I think God, God is a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's the best. I mean, God, like visually, I think that Super Saiyan 4 is a great, that is such a punk rock look for Vegeta. I think it's really neat. Uh, but I mean, <laughs> Vegeta does deserve to be a God. We just haven't established exactly what that means just yet. Like, uh, we'll see. <laughs> Go for it. Okay, this one's for Chris. Um, what do you think is your favorite thing about Vegeta and Bulma's relationship? Uh, I like the fact that it was actually defined as to why Saiyan men pick the women that they pick in Dragon Ball Super. Do you remember that when they're like, Saiyans always pick strong women, of course we do. Um, I love, I like the fact that Vegeta is showing a lot of deference to Bulma now. Like he actually, he'll make a decision, they'll look over and check and see if Bulma's okay with it now. Uh, whereas before he's just, shut up woman and bring me a drying cloth or whatever. Uh, yeah, he's, I, I love the fact that they really are acting like a, a married couple now. Thank you. This is a question for Chris. It's not Dragon Ball related, but I've always wanted to know why you named your studio Okatron 5000. That is a good question. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I'll, I can answer it pretty quickly because peop other people have asked me that before. When, like, when I was in college a billion years ago, uh, there was this thing that popped up called the internet, and then uh, <laughs> you were allowed to pick a you were allowed to pick an email address. And I was trying to be, you know, I want to be Chris at Yahoo.com, and that wasn't going to work because uh, like 900,000 people had already chosen that. So I was trying to figure out what my name was going to be, what my name was going to be, and I couldn't think of a good name for Yahoo. And then, like, my roommate came in, and we had just eaten some soul food that afternoon, and it was like, that was really good food. I'm like, yeah, I need to, I need to eat more okra. And then I realized, oh, that's a really good 
that's a really good name. I'd be eat more okra at yahoo.com. So <laughs> okra became like this word, and I would use it like in all of my screen names and stuff like that. And then so when I opened Okratron 5000, okra means really nothing. It's just a word that kind of like popped up out of nowhere. But then Tron is, I've always had this, I thought it was always really funny that you can put the word Tron or omatic at the end of any word to give it technological significance. Like, this is just a bottle, but if it's called the Bottle Tron, it's a hell of a lot cooler, right? Yes, yeah. And I was also obsessed with the year 2000, like, I, because when I was a kid, we had these, I had this book called The Kid's Whole Future Catalog, and it was told us exactly what the year 2000 was gonna be like. It didn't turn out to be anything like that at all. Uh, but there were a lot of, like, Laundry mats and stuff that called themselves Laundry Mat 2000 because that was supposed to be a futuristic theme. But by the time we got to the year 2000, 2000 sounded pretty dated at that point. And uh, so I gave our studio the name 5000 to give it like an extra 3000 years of longevity. So you're welcome. Should have, should have called it 9000. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Um, I have a question for Chris. I've been doing a lot of thinking, and I'm pretty sure everyone here wants to hear about it, but I really liked the Broly movie with the Saiyan origins, like showing King Vegeta's palace. You did awesome as King Vegeta. I was wondering, what would you say if Japan would make a movie on Vegeta's childhood, and they would show Vegeta's mother? And yes. I, I would love to see that movie. How would you feel about doing a movie like that? Uh... The, the historical stuff in the newest movie, the stuff about the Saiyan origins and King Vegeta, that was my favorite part of the movie. I mean, I like, I love the Broly stuff, but good man. I love seeing Paragus and, and uh, I love seeing King Vegeta and how prideful he was. And do you, do you, are you also the voice of King Vegeta in the, in the Spanish dub? Uh, no, I'm not. Okay. I didn't, I, was, I don't know why. Didn't want to presume, but, uh, are you, are you the voice in English? Yeah, okay. I am, because they were cheap. They were really cheap. <laughs> <laughs> they, they used me for everything because they, it, I was less expensive. But, uh, and I look like the, the part, I think that my favorite part of the Broly movie is when uh, like the Bardock and Gine, his wife, are running away, and he's saying, I want to save my son. And she's like, why do you even care? Saying men don't care at all about their children. He goes, I just, I've spent my entire life destroying, I just want to save something for once. And that for the first time, like made me feel like Goku isn't just the dumb hero that fell on his head. Um, he might have had this predestiny, like because of this kindness that was injected into him from his father Bardock, that was the first sign that like, there was this change in the Saiyan attitude and his father's like kindness was like somehow injected into Goku as he flew away in that pod. And that made me feel a lot better about the character of Goku, that like he's just, how could he, how could, it was, I've always been bothered by the fact that Goku's nice because he, he was dropped on his head as a child, that's it? Like, uh, but this, I think, adds something to it. So anything else that involves the Saiyan history, I would love to know who Vegeta's mother was. Uh, she probably wasn't very well uh, treated, but she, <laughs> but I would love to see more of that. And um, if I could name a personality for the queen, she would have a combination of Chi-Chi and Bulma's personalities. I would bet she would. I'll bet. Thank you. Thank you. And we also found out that, and this is new information, he's Vegeta the fourth. Yes. Yes, there's yeah. two more Vegetas before King Vegeta that we may never see. So wow. that's brand new information. Go. Nice to meet you. Hello, guys. My question is for Brian. If you had a real life capsule corp case with capsules in it, you could put anything in it, car, paint, hey, misbehaving kid, doesn't have to be I missed yours? the first part. Oh, if you had a real life capsule corp case, yes. that you can put anything in, like a whole poi capsule. Yeah. What would you use it for? If I could put anything in it. Yeah. yeah. Like the bulma throws tablets down. A misbehaving kid. Yeah, and a whole motorcycle yours. comes out. Like, what would you put in there? A house? Wow. You always like to get these questions in advance so you can really think up the most amazing things. That's not my fault. Not, yeah. this, not, not this time. <laughs> I know. You, you throw them out. Well, if I could put anything in it, just and pop out. That's tough. That's tough. What one thing in your life would you want to keep in your pocket at all times, like a tiny version of it that you could have appear at any moment? Oh, oh nice. 
Yeah, I'm just about to get a hot tub this summer, so that's a <laughs> Portable hot tub. You know, I love travel so much. It would probably be something that if I could just, you know, pull it out and I could hop in my, a private jet and be like, boom, I'm somewhere else today. Boom, I'm in London. Boom, I'm in Hawaii. I would be travel related because I'd love to get around and come back here too. This is a, this is freaking amazing. Thank you. How's it going, guys? My name is Javier. This, is for, uh, this question is for Chris. And so in the Broly movie, when you guys had the fight between Vegeta and Broly, um, were, you guys, were you sad that Goku kind of just butt in when you didn't even go Super Saiyan Blue yet? Or were you just like, well, I guess? <laughs> I mean, I'm so used to it by now. Goku's, <laughs> Goku always butts in. So I was, I was expecting it to happen at some point. I was just really happy that Vegeta's fight was so good though that it was just the most realistic uh fighting in his section because I, I tell people i love vegeta's because it was it was slow and it was deliberate and you really could see all of the the moves very clearly and by the time you got to goku's fight he's doing like jedi mind tricks and like <laughs> like making broly freeze in midair and reading his thoughts or whatever the heck was going on in that scene uh yeah it's it just was so bizarre uh and then by the time we got to the, the Gogeta section, it was just the Broly movie on acid. So uh, <laughs> I really loved Vegeta, like Vegeta's part was, like Vegeta's fight in it was really good. So I was happy for the amount of fighting that he did. Like he, like when I've called Sean to tell him that we were gonna work on this movie, he's like, uh, I was telling him about it, he goes, well, is, is Goku the lead in the movie? I go, actually, I think that Goku and Vegeta have an equal amount of, of time in the movie. It's pretty cool. Thank you. Question is for Brian. Um, how far along do you think Vegeta would have been if when he was in a hyperbolical time chamber and he refused to train with Trunks? Do you, how far along do you think he would have been if he would have trained with him and if he would have ended up being as strong as, if not better, as Team Gohan? How far? Yeah, how far along do You're you think You're getting the hard ones, be? man. <laughs> I'd like to ask this question to the guy who hasn't done much Dragon Ball Z for 25 years. <laughs> I would be super strong. I, wow, that is like it's so deep. How far along would I be? Yeah. Man, I would just like to be, uh, he always wanted to be strong enough to kick anybody's that's what, that, that's, what I, that's what I loved about him, is just willingness to, to get out there and, and fight. But I, I would, I don't know, I just want to be stronger than all. Oh. Uh -huh. All right. Oh, I'm sorry, Ryan. One more question. How you doing? My question's for Brian. Um, clarification on something, like, once and for all. Clarification, once and for all. When you were doing the It's Over 9,000, was that what it was given to you or like did you realize later that was a mistake and did they tell you to like reread like it's over 8,000 or like how did that happen? No idea who screwed up that translation. <laughs> no clue. Might have been Corlett down there. Ian was one of the first writers on the show. For those who don't know, the, one of the Gokus down there, he was one of the original writers on the show. Ian and Terry Klassen, who's a, who played Krillin, those guys wrote a lot of that original stuff, tried to take the direct translation and just make it more sound like humans would say it. <laughs> and um, I, I only saw that one line of dialogue. It didn't mean much more than any of the other lines to me. All I know was that as bizarre as a lot of it is that so many things just end in crazy open mouths. And I'm sure uh, I was probably asked by Carl to do it 10 times because I would never have said it that way if it was a choice that I was making pre-animation. Um, it would have been definitely something like, you know, when, when Napa says the line, I would have probably said, it's over 9,000, and just make it short. But, and I, I'm sure Carl was like, oh, Brian, um, his mouth is still open for quite a bit. Can we, can you um, just carry the 9,000 a little bit longer? Okay, how about this? Well, it's over 9,000! His, his, his mouth was still open for quite a bit after you stopped, and I can't loop that to make it longer. So if you could just carry it a, just a bit more than that. Okay, we got a lot to do today, though, Carl. Now I know, but just try and carry it a little bit longer. 
It's over 9,000! No, Brian. Brian, 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 it's just a hair longer. I know we don't want to dwell on this, <laughs> but if you could just make it a little bit longer, we can move on to the next bit. It's not important. No one will even remember this stupid line, so let's just try and get it <laughs> in the can and try one more time. It's over 9,000! <laughs> yeah, that, thanks, Brian. That's good. Uh, and you know, in, in Spanish, we... We made a mistake because uh, we said it's over eight thousand. I don't know why. <laughs> you may, you got it right. You we made right, a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> we said it's over eight thousand. I don't know why. All right, we're gonna wrap it up here. Thanks everybody for coming. One more question before we close out. First of all, thank y'all for being here. Tomorrow, the Ocean Dub and the GT panel will be in this room, so come back for that. Final question. I'm gonna start with um, Brian, then Chris, then Renee. Where do you think your life and career would be without Dragon Ball? Where do you think you'd be? Or what would you do? Uh, I would still be working on a lot of stuff, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. yeah, it was very early in my career, and things were really taken off. And because we only did 50 or 60 episodes, uh, and then by the time it came back and we did more for Canada, I was working on a lot of shows. This part of my life would be very different, which is an amazing part of my life. This would probably not exist in the same way at all. And this, honestly, is the fun part. Not screaming, it's over 9,000, but meeting all you guys. So that's what would be very different in my life. But as far as working on shows, I think, still think I'd be pretty busy um, because it was, it's, a, it's a very minute part of the, uh, uh, n the shows that I've done in, in my career, probably like you guys do. It's a smaller part of what we've done. But this part, too cool. I would have missed out on some crazy fun with you guys. I, I have to say, mine's the opposite answer from his, because I, I probably would have been stuck doing a bunch of radio commercials and uh, just commercial spots, and I may not have ever found any work in the, like, in the anime and dubbing community if Funimation hadn't taken over and brought it into the Dallas area. Uh, and I just happened to be just kind of at the right place at the right time. Like my, I don't even know what I'd be doing now. Like I, I, I have no clue. Like I, this, this is something I didn't even expect to be doing for so long. I'm still shocked that you guys are still letting me do this stuff. Um, it's, yeah, it's, I, and I have this weird feeling I might be doing this for the rest of my darn life. So uh, it's, I, it, it happened to be just like the, it's, it's amazing, I got the best job you could possibly ever have, and I just happened to get it on the first time out of the box, like, unbeknownst to me. It took many, many years for me to realize, oh yeah, people actually like this show, because at the start, when I would go to conventions, they were all like, why'd you change the voices, you jerk? Uh, so, conventions were quite like this experience. They were a, a lot different uh, for me. So it took a long time to actually figure out that like this is something this is something that's very important. So I was very, very lucky to get one of the best things in my entire life. This, it, it brought me, it's brought my entire livelihood, my studio. I wouldn't have met my wife without it. I wouldn't, I mean, I probably would have been too scared to have kids, um, but Vegeta gave me so much strength and power um, and virility. Um, I don't know, I, I have no idea where I would be, but it would not be here and I'm so grateful to be here. Thank you very much for having me. Uh, I have to agree with Brian. Uh, when we were doing uh, Dragon Ball Z, uh, I, I start dubbing, well, I start acting when I was uh, four years old. So my entire life, I've been an actor. So I started in theater and then television and then dubbing. And it's part of my life, as Brian said, with the fans, with the travels, to anywhere, I mean, I've been in all Latin America, and the fans, uh, let me tell you, are the same <laughs> in all over the world. I mean, it's a community, it's a, a, a generation, I don't know, but uh, they found a, a bound, uh, and yes, it's, it's, it's amazing, it's really, really amazing. So that, that part of my life, it's uh, because of Vegeta, Vegeta in Espanol. <laughs> it, and that is wrong. We, we, we just, uh, we must say Vegeta, but Geta, 
<laughs> in Spanish, it's, it's not a good word. <laughs> so we left Vegeta. So, yeah, but the, the, the love of the fans is amazing. This, this, uh, it's just amazing. And this phenomenon, is, uh, it's over 9,000. <laughs> or beyond, I don't know. And thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, I just want to say one quick thing. Like, I, I'm so happy you're here, and it, but this, like, it's been really special to meet the the Mexican cast of this. Like, both. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much, Chris. Like, you guys are such great people. The, I met them yesterday, and they're just the kindest, nicest people, and they're happy to be oh, here, and we're so happy so to much. have you in our thank country. You so thank much, you, Chris. Thanks for you for your hospitality. Adios, insecto. Goodbye, freaks. Thank you.